Hi, I'm Harvey Jennings with Atlassian. You know, gone are the days of compiling code and pushing it to production after all the features are created and all the bugs are fixed. In order to remain competitive in today's market, your organization has to integrate and deploy its software continuously. Bamboo is a continuous integration and delivery tool that ties automated builds, tests, and releases in a single workflow. In this tutorial, we'll learn about Bamboo's hierarchy, how to run build tasks in parallel or sequentially, how to create our build and execute our pipeline in Bamboo, how to view errors in the pipeline, and how to use Bamboo's reports. There is some terminology with which you need to be familiar. Let's discuss that first. There are five building blocks that make up Bamboo's structure. The top level of this hierarchy is a project. A project is made up of one or more plans. A plan is made up of one or more stages. A stage is made up of one or more jobs. And a job is made up of one or more tasks. Let's start at the bottom level of the structure and go into more detail about each level. Tasks are the individual operations that comprise your builds, such as executing a script, compiling code, or running tests. Tasks execute one at a time in the order you specify. If a failure occurs, Bamboo executes that task to whatever extent possible and then stops the entire build. Tasks live inside the next building block, which is a job. Jobs ensure interdependent tasks are executed in the correct order. Independent tasks live in their own jobs. Jobs are how you tell Bamboo in what order your tasks must be run. Jobs execute in parallel in their own container called a stage. Stages execute in order and Bamboo won't execute a downstream stage until all the jobs in the previous stages pass. This prevents build failures from cascading through the rest of your pipeline. Don't put the job that deploys your code in the same stage as the job that compiles your code. The job that deploys the code may execute before the job that compiles your code. If the code isn't compiled, there's nothing to deploy, and your stage would fail unnecessarily. Stages are how you control the flow of job execution. Stages also belong to a plan, the top-level building block. A plan is an atomic series of build steps. Plans can be triggered in different ways. They can be triggered by changes in source control. They can be scheduled to run at certain intervals or they can be started manually. Finally, there are projects. A project is a collection of plans. Only a Bamboo admin can create plans and projects. One way to implement the hierarchy is to assign a project per team. Each team within your organization is assigned its own project, and the team lead of each team is assigned as the project admin. From there, teams create their own plans, and members of the team can create stages, jobs, and tasks. By implementing Bamboo this way, your teams are self-organizing. Let's review. Tasks and stages run sequentially in their containers, and jobs run in parallel within stages. By understanding the Bamboo structure, you can effectively build your pipelines to enable your CI-CD workflow. Since you're starting out with a new install of Bamboo, let's start at the beginning by creating a project. Here Alana, our Bamboo admin, is logged in and is going to create a new project for our team. From the menu bar, click Create and select Create New Project. You must supply a project name and a project key, but just like most of the keys in Atlassian products, it will create one for you, but you can change it if you like. Now we have a Bamboo project. While Alana is at it, she's going to create a connection to the repo on the Bitbucket server our team will be using. By her creating it this way, it'll be available for everyone that needs it. She clicks on the Bamboo Administration cog and selects Linked Repositories. Now you can see the list of repos to which Bamboo already has connections. Alana is going to create one for the repo to which our team will be connecting. Next, since our repo is on Bitbucket server, she selects that from the list. She gives it a name. This is the name we will see when we create a plan later. Next, she selects the actual repo on the Bitbucket server. 
All of the rest of the options are good as they are, so she clicks Save Repository, and she's done. Now we can see the new repo connection in the list. We'll use this in just a moment. Next, we need a bamboo plan. Alana just created a project that will contain all of our plans. I'm going to select Create from the top menu bar, and then select Create Plan. We have to supply our plan with a name and a key. I'm going to click this checkbox so all the members on my team can also see this plan. Now we have to supply a repo to the plan. Since Alana created the connection for us previously, I'll just select it from the list on the Configure Plan button. The next step is to create a job and a task. We want this job and all of its tasks to run in the agent's native OS, so accept the default. An initial task is created for you. This task will check out the project's code from Bitbucket before any of our other tasks are executed. This task uses the default Bitbucket server connection we selected for our plan. Click Create to create the entire hierarchy. The plan is going through its first build. Congrats! You have created and configured your first Bamboo plan hierarchy. What are the other types of tasks I can set up in Bamboo? Great question. Let's check that out. Add a task just like we did previously. Next is a listing of all the task types and they're categorized on the left. First are the builder types. Those are the tasks you will use to build your projects, such as Maven or Node.js. Next are the tests. These are the tasks you will use to test your project, such as PHP unit or Node unit. Next are the deployment tasks. These tasks will deploy your project to Tomcat or AWS, for instance. Next are the source control tasks. These tasks will execute source control commands such as branch and commit. Finally, there are variable types. You can use these to dump information to a log or inject values from a file into your task. Let's review our team's build workflow. As an overview, we have to build it, test it, and deploy it. Each of those steps has steps of its own. For instance, before our QA department puts any part of the app through testing, the app has to be built and some unit testing is accomplished. In order for QA to be able to perform their tasks, the app has to be deployed to the QA server. Many of these tasks are reliant on other tasks completing successfully. Then there are tasks that can be performed in parallel, such as integration testing and UI testing. Let's assign the steps to Bamboo tasks and decide which run sequentially and which can run in parallel. Our initial build tasks are all sequential tasks. Unit tests can't occur until the code has been compiled and it can't be deployed to the QA server until both of those tasks are complete. So these tasks are sequential. What about our testing tasks? Do my UI tests have to be completed before my API tests are executed? No. In fact, none of my tests rely upon other testing tasks being completed. That means my testing tasks can be executed in parallel. What about our final deploy tasks? Obviously, we can't perform any smoke tests until the app has been deployed. So the smoke tests are dependent on the deploy to prod task. What about the smoke tests? Are they dependent on each other? No, they can be executed in parallel. Now we have our tasks broken down into parallel tasks and sequential tasks. Let's take our workflow and apply Bamboo's hierarchy to it. We have all of our tasks and have them labeled as sequential or parallel. Now we need to apply jobs and stages to our workflow. Let's review. Tasks run sequentially in jobs. Jobs run in parallel in stages. And stages run sequentially in plans. Our first set of tasks, build tasks, are all sequential, which means they can all go into a single job, and since they need to be completed before the test tasks, the build tasks can all be in a single stage. But before we do that, let's think about it for a minute. We deployed a QA, and we deployed a prod. The tasks themselves are the same. The only difference is the server. I'm going to tell you a secret. You can clone jobs. 
So jobs that are similar, like our deploy, can be cloned to make things easier. Let's put that in its own job and in stage two. Our second set of tasks, test, are all tasks that can run in parallel. Remember, tasks run sequentially in jobs, and jobs run in parallel in stages. Since each of these tasks can run in parallel, each task will be in its own job, and each job will be in stage three. Our third set of tasks, deploy, is different than what we've seen so far. Our first set of tasks were all sequential. Our second set was all parallel tasks. The deploy set is a combination of parallel and sequential tasks. Since deploy prod is the only sequential task, it will be in a job by itself, and the job will be in stage four by itself. Now the two smoke tests are independent of each other and can run in parallel, so they each go into their own job, because jobs can run in parallel. These two jobs will go into stage five. Look at stage one and stage five. They both have two tasks. Why does stage one have a single job and stage five have two jobs? Remember the tasks in stage one are sequential tasks and tasks within a job run sequentially. The tasks in stage five, on the other hand, are tasks that run in parallel. The only way to get these two tasks to run in parallel is to assign each to its own job because jobs within a single stage run in parallel. Let's start out by creating the stages. I'll just create one stage because you create them all the same way. Start from the plan configuration screen and select stages from the configuration menu. Click the create stage button on the right hand side of the screen. Give your stage a name and a description. Some of the stages in your build pipeline you might want to manually start. Let's say for instance that because you're implementing continuous integration, you want to build with every commit and test that build, but you don't want to deploy every build. In this case, stages one through three will execute automatically. However, stage four, our deployment stage, will only be executed when it started manually. In the case of stage four, I would click the manual start checkbox. Let's say that regardless of success or failure for all your other stages, you want your final stage to execute. Perhaps this stage writes information to an audit log. In this case, I would click the final stage checkbox. When you're done, click the create button. Now you'll notice I created stage two and all of the other stages were already created. I want to show you how you can rearrange objects. There is a series of dots to the left of the object name, the stage name in this case. Click and hold that, then drag the object to wherever you want the object to be. In this case, I want stage two above stage three. Now that we have all the stages for our workflow created, we need to create the jobs. Still, in the plan configuration screen for stages, click the add job link below the stage. In this case, we're creating a new job. But let's say you have a job that is the same for a test environment as it is for the production environment. You could clone that job and not have to recreate all the specific configurations. Just like so many of the other objects, a job needs a name and a key, and you don't have to create the key. Bamboo will create one for you. You can either have the job execute in the agent's native OS, in my case Linux, or you can have a job execute in an isolated and controlled environment that you create. Maybe I need to test my app in the Windows OS and the Mac OS. Click the Create Job button when you're finished. You can now see our new job in Stage 2. We've created part of our plan. Let's run it and see what happens. From the plan configuration screen, click Run in the upper right part of the screen, then select Run Plan. There isn't a lot to run, but it should run without mistakes, and you can tell that by the green bar across the top with the details and by the green check marks next to each job. Notice execution stop prior to stage four. Stage four is set up to run manually, and you can tell that by the play button next to stage four. I'm going to click that and start it manually. You can see stage four executed successfully, and then stage five started because it is set up to run automatically after the previous stage is completed. 
Currently, we only have the task that Bamboo created for us. Let's look at how to create tasks. Let's create the task that will execute the build process. Remember, tasks belong to jobs. Still on the Plan Configuration screen, select the job to which the task belongs. In our case, it belongs to the Build Unit Test Package job under Stage 1. In the center panel of the screen, click the Add Task button. Next appears the Task Type window. We want to create a build task, so let's select Build to limit the tasks through which to search. Let's say we're deploying to AWS. Select that task type, and next you see the configuration window for that task. Here you can see you can populate the AWS specific information. What if instead we're deploying to Tomcat? You would select that task type and then populate the Tomcat specific configuration. There are too many tasks to go through them all, but there is a task type for nearly every type of task you'll need in your build process. And if there isn't a Bamboo native task type, you can always search through the Atlassian Marketplace or use the Bamboo API and create one of your own. For more information on a specific task type, see the documentation on that task. So far our build has run through completion successfully. Now we all hope that's the way it always is, but we also know that's not reality. What if one of our tests fails? From the plan configuration screen, run the plan. We can see the jobs in the first two stages run through completion successfully. Next we can see three jobs in stage three are running simultaneously. Remember from earlier in this tutorial, Jobs in the same stage run simultaneously. Because of all the red on the screen, we can tell something failed. Let's look into this. At the very top, we can see this is build 8, and right below that, we can see this build failed. It also tells us that this build was run manually by me. That's because I clicked Run Plan to execute the plan, rather than something triggering the build, like a GET request from Bitbucket. If we look down the left, we can see all the stages and jobs. There's an, a red exclamation point next to the job integration test user account. So we know that job failed. I wonder why it failed. Well, if we look in the center panel and scroll down, we can see the error summary for the job. It failed because we probably didn't configure it correctly. There's a slight chance that someone deleted or moved the test executable file. Either way, we know what we need to do to fix this. Let's look at the stages and jobs listing on the left again. It appears the other two jobs in stage three ran through completion successfully. How can this be? Should they have even started until after the first job completed successfully? No, remember jobs in the same stage run simultaneously. So when we created stage 3 and included the three jobs in that stage, we told Bamboo that there were no dependencies between those three jobs and that they can run at the same time. Now if there's a problem with the last two jobs in stage 3 running before the first job ends, that was our mistake in setting it up this way. Bamboo did what we told it to do. All right, so is there a reason stage four didn't even run? That's a good question. Look at stage four in the listing. It has a small play button next to it. Remember when we set it up earlier and decided we wanted to execute it manually instead of automatically when the stage before it was done? Well, that's the main reason it didn't run. If it wasn't set to run manually, it wouldn't have run because stage three failed to run through completion successfully. What if I'm a team lead or a scrum master and I need some statistics on how my team is integrating? Bamboo has reports that can give you that information. From the top menu, select reports and then reports from the drop-down menu. Here is the build activity report. 
It shows me how many builds were executed each day for each plan. All I care about are the builds for my plan. I can see we have five builds in the last two days of January, but there weren't any builds performed on the 1st of February. I wonder why. Was that a day off? Was my team pulled onto some other project for the day? I'll have to look further into that. I'll select the build duration report. I wonder how long the builds were taking those last two days of January. The builds were taking progressively longer as time went forward, but they're only taking a few seconds. My group must have been setting up the plan then. You can see from the list of reports that there are many, and you can get statistics you may need to find snags in your CICD or to evaluate your process to see if there are places that you and your team can improve. Let's review. Bamboo is a continuous integration and delivery tool. It has a hierarchy structure. Tasks are at the bottom level in the hierarchy. Tasks run sequentially and belong to a job. Jobs run in parallel and belong to a stage. Stages run sequentially and belong to a plan. And finally, plans belong to a project. You build your bamboo pipeline by applying this hierarchy to your CICD workflow. Your pipeline can be triggered automatically or manually. And bamboo provides reports to give you and your team information that will allow you to analyze your workflow. In a future tutorial, we'll see how to integrate bamboo and Bitbucket together with Jira.